This is a book ball summary of the book Connect by David Bradford and Carol Robin. We live in a world where relationships exist on a continuum. At one end, you have contact but no real connection. The middle stage is a place where you feel connected but may want to be closer. On the other end, you feel accepted, seen and supported for whom you want to be, not for what you are on Instagram. Relationships of exceptional quality are found here, and they needn't be the exception. Interpersonal Dynamics, a popular Stanford MBA course, explores the hallmarks of exceptional relationships. The strategies they recommend include cultivating core behavioral competencies, mastering your emotions and resolving conflict constructively. Developing real connections requires getting beyond superficiality and learning about yourself and others. Learning and adopting a growth mindset for healthy relationships. Exceptional relationships require a growth mindset and hard work. You won't, don't need to, and can't develop an exceptional relationship with everybody. But the deepest, most authentic connections demands time and effort. Think about the relationships in your life. Your bonds with friends and colleagues, family members, and romantic partners. Maybe you're not sure if they're exceptional material, but you'd like them to go from casual to personal, from competitive to collaborative, or simply from dysfunctional to functional. The authors have spent their careers teaching thousands of students and clients how to build and maintain robust relationships in a variety of settings. The role of interpersonal know-how can range from increasing well-being in your personal life to being fundamental to professional success. To build and keep up your relationships, you have to learn how to learn or adopt a growth mindset. This involves letting go of the idea that you know best and being willing to try new things. Remember that your efforts might not always yield your desired goal and you need to work to personalize the lessons you learn. Before we begin, choose four to five relationships that you'd like to deepen. Keep a journal to document your thoughts and process. When it comes to self-disclosure, more is usually more. Keeping up false fronts is exhausting, and it leads others to fabricate their own stories about us. 15% rule, a tool to help you consider your choices. Authentic self-disclosure means sharing the parts of yourself that are important to a specific relationship but not revealing everything. The authors propose the 15% rule to address this dilemma. Expand your comfort zone into the learning zone in increments of just 15%. In practical terms, this might mean confiding in something slightly risky to a friend. The 15% rule is simply a tool to help you consider your choices. Instead of an innocuous remark like, sometimes I worry about what others think of me, it might be more specific. The other day, I commented on your eating habits and have been worrying about what you thought of me ever since. Of course, the number 15 is subjective. A 15% move for you might seem low risk for another person and drastic for a third. When sharing feelings, be aware of the language you use. I feel upset by your comment is different from I feel like you want to dominate this conversation. The vulnerability arises from strength, not weakness. The vulnerability arises from strength, not weakness. People often worry that self-disclosures will make them seem weak, but nothing can be further from the truth. In addition to being vulnerable, exceptional relationships are also characterized by trust. We can now understand vulnerability in a more nuanced way. Simply revealing personal things about yourself isn't vulnerable if you know how others will react. There's no risk involved. However, sharing when you're unsure about the reaction to your disclosure brings others closer. We can now talk about the third hallmark of an exceptional relationship. Trusting that one's self-disclosures won't be used against one. People often worry that disclosure, especially regarding perceived defects, will make them seem weak. Leaders, for example, may think sharing anything that rattles their superhuman exterior will hurt their stature. But in general, nothing could be further from the truth. It takes fortitude to self-disclose. Your peers will recognize and admire this, and use your disclosure as a model for their transparency. If you're finding this video to be enjoyable, show your support by liking it and subscribing to my channel for even more fantastic content. Your encouragement means everything to me and drives me to keep creating videos for you. Self-disclosures and behavioral patterns. While vulnerability invites closeness, silence does the opposite. By being reticent with self-disclosure, we lose control of how others perceive us, creating a negative feedback loop of false fronts. When dealing with self-disclosures, tread a fine line between being curious and being intrusive. Listen actively, suspend judgment, use open-ended questions listen for emotions, express empathy, and show acceptance to encourage others' full expression. People can change with the help of behaviorally specific feedback. Instead of assuming that a certain set of behaviors defines a person, 
try discerning the elements that perpetuate his behaviour patterns. To change habitual behaviours, someone's willingness to change has to be stronger than his resistance to change. This is determined by three variables, dissatisfaction with their current behaviour, vision and first steps. If changing a behaviour sounds daunting, it is, at least at first. With practice, your new habits will replace your old ones and become routine. When giving feedback on others' behaviours, be aware that you'll probably encounter some resistance. Be behaviourally specific and don't assume you know their motives. To continue with the tennis analogy, feedback starts conversations, it doesn't end them. Recognise the value in the other person's struggle and provide feedback that stays on your side of the net. Cultivating self-awareness is the only sure path to resolution. Appreciate the power and range of emotions. Own your emotions or they will own you. We've all heard the adage, but it can be difficult to follow in today's world. Emotions are often discredited in the workplace and schools, where the emphasis is on reason and logic. As a result, when we do express our feelings, we tend to downplay their intensity. And since we're so used to numbing ourselves, we often don't recognise what we're truly feeling, whether good or bad. As Brené Brown notes, when we numb anger, sadness and fear, we also numb gratitude, love and joy. Ignoring our emotions isn't healthy. And when we try to mask our feelings, we tend to leak them anyway. Our tone might become sharp, or we'll unconsciously utter an expression of contempt, which will probably increase dysfunction in a relationship. Also, not dealing with grievances can lead to escalation. The authors define pinches as little things that bother us. For example, when someone makes a joke at our expense, we may object, or maybe we'll just let it slide. However, if a pinch does get under our skin and isn't dealt with, it'll fester and grow into a problem that's impossible to ignore, or what the authors call a crunch. This is when emotional explosions happen. The only sure path to resolution is to understand our own needs and to say them out loud. To tap into the wealth of insight offered by emotions, we first need to cultivate self-awareness. Relationships are rarely linear, but they'll keep growing if you face your fears. Anger is a secondary emotion, often used to hide more vulnerable feelings like rejection or envy. We always have a choice about how to respond, so always have agency. Conflicts can lead to deeper, more resilient bonds. Kintsugi, the Japanese art of mending broken pottery, believes that damaged objects should be celebrated rather than covered up. Get the other person to take the issue seriously, share fully what's going on with her, and arrive at a mutually satisfying solution. This might take a while and involve more than one conversation. If the process resulted in hurt feelings or saying things you regret, start with a simple but heartfelt, I'm sorry. Let your partner or colleague know how much you value her and the relationship. You probably won't immediately feel comfortable with conflict, but with practice and persistence, you'll become competent with confrontation. Relationships are rarely linear, but they'll keep growing if you face your fears. Sometimes this means returning to an earlier stage to reassess whatever agreements you made in the past, or having meta-level discussion about why you can't talk. Challenging someone can be a compelling sign of support, and it's important to show that you understand how the other person is feeling. However, it's important to distinguish between empathy and agreement, and to view being called out on behaviour as a chance to learn. Just as fear can limit you, a deep sense of safety and honesty with someone else can free you. We hope this video provided valuable insights and information for you. Where does the book help you? Personal fulfilment or professional success? Let us know in the comments. And if you've learned something new in this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you, and until next time.